actually start typical geometry. So Euclid, what in high school, what we study is called Euclidean geometry. Okay? Euclid, the mathematician, is the father of geometry, so they call it Euclidean geometry. They can do that there. If you go to college and study a pure math major, I mean like you're taking a hardcore pure math classes, um, you'll study other geometries as well. So there's a geometry called spherical geometry. So we live on a sphere, fish, right? We live on Earth, which is like a sphere. In Euclidean geometry, how many degrees are there in every triangle? 180 degrees, right? And how many right angles could you possibly have? That's one. But that's not true in spherical geometry. So think about if you're on a plane, if you're on a plane and you're flying from here to Florida, it may be a straight line this way, but it actually curves around the Earth, right? So it is possible to draw to, if you have three spots, it is possible to make two right angles and eventually come together if you're on a sphere. So not every triangle has 180 degrees. It could have more. Or it could have less. It kind of breaks your brain because you've always been told there's 180 degrees in every triangle. Right? So we study Euclidean geometry. I'm not going to throw any spherical geometry at you. No worries. So 180 is still a good number for us. All right. Uh, so Euclid, when he started discovering all these things about shapes and, and noticing all these properties, he had to start writing about it, talking about it, recording things. So he said if he could make up three words and their definitions, he could build all of the geometry from there. Okay, so think about this. Euclid was, was alive like 300 B.C. 300 BC when Euclid was the prime of his life. They making up that stuff for all of us to learn. So 2,300 plus years ago, he was doing this. Uh, so he said if he could come up with the definition of three words, make them up on his own, he could base everything else on those three words. Think about how powerful that is. Like, that's crazy. Like, could you make up three words right now, definitions, and then Children, 2,000 years from now, study that? That's insane, isn't it? It's hard to wrap your brain around. So, Euclid did, because Euclid, I guess, was in charge. He's the biggest math guy there, right? So, he came up with what are called the undefined terms of geometry. He defined them, okay? So, he made up the definitions for three words. Point, line, and plane. Okay? These three words, all of geometry is still defined. So I know today we're going to I have a lot of definitions to dump at you, but hopefully you'll know most of them. I might be a little bit more specific in, in terms of the definitions. We're going to talk about um, notations, how to mark them down, how to how to um, how to name things. I'm going to try to make it go as, as fast as possible. Honestly, I think this is one of the more boring days of geometry. And I'm sorry, but it's important that we talk about these concepts. Okay, so I did write um, the definitions down for you. What you're probably going to want to take notes on is how to name things. Okay, all right. So we're going to do. I'm going to give you a bunch of definitions. You're going to do something as a group, and then I'll let you work as on homework. Good. Okay. So our three undefined terms are point, line, and plane. So let's start with the point. A point is a location in space that has no size or shape. Okay, now that being said, in algebra or middle school, they would say plot the point two four. So you go over two spaces, up four spaces, and put a big black dot, right? Okay, well you had to put a dot because your teacher, your teacher had to know that you knew where two four is. But really, it's just referring to that exact location, right? You didn't really have to put a dot there because that dot existed or that that location existed, right? But we had to communicate to our teacher that we know where it is. So really, those points are just locations. They don't really have a size or a shape or a depth. Okay. To name a point, we use only uppercase letters. So that would be like point A. Okay, you cannot use lowercase, it has to be uppercase. If you write lowercase, it's wrong. The next term is a line. 
So a line is an infinite number of points that extend in opposite directions without end. Okay, so an infinite number of points, meaning it never, never stops, you can always add more to it. Okay, so really they go in both directions and they never ever stop. So the problem is my board does stop. Your paper stops, right? You run out of paper. So we have to put arrows on the end to show that this line is continuing on in opposite directions forever and ever and ever. So I told you there are an infinite number of points on here. Sometimes we name some points on there, sometimes we don't. It really depends on what our overall purpose is. But let's say I put three points on there. I'll just name them A, B, and C. There are, again, more points on there, but I only need identifying three of them. So to name a line, you can name it with any two points that are on that line. Okay, any two points that are on that line. So I can name it as AB, and we draw a line above it. I can reverse it and call it BA. The order of those points do not matter. I could do BC and CB, or I could do AC or CA. All six of these meet, all six of these meet the exact same line. Okay, so any two points, not three, not four, just two. Okay, we don't identify all the points, just any two. There is an exception to this. Sometimes, as we get further along in geometry, you have a lot of lines in a figure. Okay, and if I start naming at least two points on every line, it just gets really, the waters get really muddy. They get just too much stuff in there, and you can't even see what you're supposed to look for. You have no room to write anything. So, what they end up doing is naming lines with lowercase script letters. So they put like an L, M, um, we do a K, P, those are off. Those are typically, those are their first chosen letters. Sometimes they'll do an S. Okay, so they can say line M or line K or line P. That way, that, sub, that subscript there is over to the side. It's out of the way, but you still know which line they're referring to. And typically they would write line P or whatever it is. I think they would write the word line with it. Is that okay? Questions on any lines? All right. The last thing undefined curvature geometry is a plane. Okay, so a plane is a flat surface, has no thickness, but it's a flat surface that extends in all directions indefinitely. Okay, so like my tabletop here. If it were extended to that classroom, into this office and classroom, into the hallway and classroom, and into the courtyard and beyond, that's a plane. Okay, the bottom of the desk is a plane. The side of the desk is a plane. The floor is a plane. Your book is a plane. Your table is a plane. The wall is a plane. Any of those, as long as they're a flat surface and they extend it forever and ever and ever, that would be a plane. So how do we draw something that looks like that? They came up with drawing a parallelogram, basically. So if you see um, if you see a parallelogram that's supposed to be a plane, most of the time, especially if it's like printed material, it's shaded in. Light blue or light purple are the ghosts. I don't know why, but usually they are light blue or light purple. Um, not that it really matters, just to pick a color green for all that matters. But um, that would be a representation of a plane. To name a plane, to name a plane, there's two ways. First of all, they could put a capital letter, and it's usually script. They could put a capital letter in one of the corners. It doesn't. There's no rule as far as which corner it needs to be in. So we could call this plane K. We can also name it by three points that are not on the same line. Okay, so I can name this plane ABC. Okay, but these three points cannot be on the same line. Okay, 
may not on the same line. In that ABC, I just put alphabetical order, but you could list those in any order as well. Questions about point, line, and plane? All right, so these are the three terms that everything is built upon. So our next term is a segment, and I have a typo. I put a big red X, cross out that second segment there. It says part of a line that has two endpoints. I don't want to waste more paper by fixing that and copying. Sorry. So part of a line that has two endpoints. So we're saying it's not the entire line, it's just a section of it, and it has a definite start and a definite stop. They're called endpoints. Okay. Now, in the past, you may have seen a, a segment that had like these big knobby points at the end, right? Some, some books will do that every once in a while, sometimes they don't. You don't have to have those big knobby points. If there's no arrow, we assume there's an endpoint there. Okay, so if you don't see an arrow like here, then it's an endpoint. Okay, so these have um, all of those would have endpoints. I did give you some examples and some counter examples. All the ones on the right have at least one arrow, right? So that's what makes them not segment. To name a segment, we name it with its two endpoints. Okay, I don't care about anything in between. So this top segment would be called segment XY. This segment over here would be segment AB. Draw that little segment line over top. Questions on that? Change it. All right. Next term is collinear. This is not misspelled. There are two L's, and I don't know why. It's called collinear. It means on the same line. Co means together or with, right? Linear sounds like line. So it just means points on the same line. Now, that being said, if you're they usually in geometry figures they do not try to trick you. So like if this point was super super close, and you're like I don't know if that's put like that on the line or not, they don't play that game. Like if they're going to make it not collinear, it's going to be obvious. Okay, so there's no arguing about well is it really on or is it you know a hundredth of a millimeter off? Nobody plays it. Okay, so let's go back now for a second to planes. So I said not on the same line. Which means they're going to be non collinear. So they they can be they have to be non collinear, not on the same line. Okay. All right. Next term is coplanar. So I think about what it sounds like. Co means together. And then planar sounds like plane. So it just means on the same plane. So you can have points and lines and rays and segments all on the same plane. If it's going to be on the same plane, it is housed within that parallelogram. Okay, same thing here. Um, they're not going to try to trick you and put one right on the edge. Like, is it in the plane or is it not? We don't play that game. Okay, so this would be, this point here would be non coplanar with these two points. Is that all right? Okay. Next term. Next term are congruent segments. So these are segments that have the same length or measurement. Okay, the same length or measure. So sometimes you'll see segments that actually have a measurement, four centimeters and four centimeters. Okay. A lot of times in geometry, though, I don't care what it measures. I just need to know if it's the same length as something. It could be a hundred feet or a half an inch, it doesn't matter in my book. Okay, so instead of having all that extra writing, what we tend to do is create tick marks. So if you have two segments that are the same length, they each have the same number of tick marks. Okay, 
Okay, so these two segments are going to be converted into one tick mark, one tick mark. Here, excuse me, the segments that have one tick mark are congruent to each other, and the segments that have two tick marks are congruent to each other. Are you familiar with the tick mark method? Anybody not seen this before? All right, so let's name some congruent segments here. So if AB is congruent to XY, the symbol for congruent looks like this. It's an equal sign with a tilde. That's the symbol for congruent. So I can say that AB, segment AB, is congruent to segment XY. All right, I'm going to give you a table one minute to talk about can lines be congruent. Talk about your table. Can lines be congruent? Okay. So I need to have to pass through a midpoint. 
So I'm going to write up two statements up here. One of them is true, one of them is false. Okay, you're going to decide which one is true, which one is false. All right, so AB bisects line CD, or does line CD bisect segment AB? One's true, one's false. Which one is true? The second one is true. The line is cutting AB in half. Bisect, bi means two. Sec means to cut, like dissection. Okay, so it cuts into two equal parts. Well, we know a line can't be cut into congruent parts, right? Okay, so CD here has to bisect AB, which makes M is the midpoint. Of, in our case, AB. And this is the midpoint of AB. We can say M bisects AB. Point M bisects segment AB. All right, one last term. Am I going too fast? Just go. Okay. All right, the last term we're going to talk about is a ray. A ray is a part of a line that has exactly one endpoint. A part of a line that has exactly one endpoint. Okay, so it has an endpoint and then it continues on in the other, whatever direction, indefinitely. To name an array, you have to start by naming the endpoint first. So we're going to focus on this ray first. Okay, so that would be ray. You can say A-Y or A-B. Okay, this would be Ray. You can call it A-Y or A-B. The endpoint, this has to be listed first. Okay, the endpoint must be listed first. Yes? So is the arrow above the line? Good question. No, it does not. So in the notation, this arrow always points to the right. It doesn't matter which way it's going in the figure. This always goes to the right. So the endpoint is listed first. And then your second point is anything in that direction that you want it to go. So if I had a Q down here, I could have done AQ. And AR, if I had an R down there, I could do AR. Okay. There's another ray up here. Oh, my board's going to throw a bit. Hold on. There you go. All right, so one that starts here at Y and goes in this direction. So because it starts at Y, it would be called YB. Oh, that's no, supposed to be great. Sorry. Okay, so that would be called YB. Do I have a ray YA? I don't in this case because A stops it, right? There's no arrow down here. Honestly, rays is one of the things people mess up the most. So you have to be careful there. We're going to deal more with rays on Monday. All right. I'm going to give your table a couple minutes here. On um, the next slide, I have three sets of figures. Right? I have three figures. I want you, as a table, to work together. I want you to just, I want you to name each midpoint if there is one, and the segment that it bisects, and then I want you to name any congruent segments. Do that for each of the three figures. Okay, I'm gonna give you about three minutes or so. Yes. No, you can name right C, you have AC, AB is the same rate. You have CA, No, but the problem is that we didn't have, we didn't have point an arrow down here at all. So if I would have had this, then there would have been a Y A. But because there was nothing there at all, that's why I had to stop. Does that make more sense? Yeah. 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 Y
identified as That's okay. No, you're good. We did something with that on the second day. It was just kind of an activity. Not a big deal. Okay, so yesterday then we learned about Tinkercad. So the first two pages are just like a cheat sheet, like how to use it if you've never used it. And then um, this is the assignment I posted on Google Classroom. I don't know if you saw it. But we, we worked on Tinkercad yesterday when we built most of this house together. But these are all the things you have to have. Okay. Um, if you can't do it or don't want to do it to class. Okay. Okay. I can't really believe it. Tinker Pad is supposed to be fun and I just want to stress you yeah. out. So I don't want it to stress you out. Like, okay. I don't choose to do, uh, not do other homework because you have to get Tinker okay. Pad done. Okay. So just come and talk. So you just turn it in on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Well, no, what I'm going to have you do is just take a, a, a picture of it. Yeah. Okay. And throw it in Google Classroom. Right. Okay. okay. I'll be sure we'll be on set. All right, let's go over this real quick. So the first one, do we have a midpoint? Yes. Yes. F is the midpoint of what? Segment, segment CD. Good. Do we have a bisector? We have two of them, kind of, right? So what bisects CD? EG bisects CD, but also F would bisect if F was along. Can bisect CD, right? Is that okay? Because it's a point. A point can bisect a segment. Do we have congruent segments? Yes. CF is congruent to FD. Good. How about the second one? Do we have a midpoint? Yes. What's our midpoint? K. K is the midpoint of JL. Do we have congruent segments? Yes, we have JK is converted to KL. Remember, the order of those is 
not matter. Okay? And then we also have J H congruent to H L. Is that okay? Okay, last one then. Do we have a midpoint? We do not. Do we have a bisector? We do not. Do we have any congruent segments? We do not. Okay, it may look like it's in the middle, but we cannot assume it. Yes. So is K and H both midpoints? Only K is the midpoint. Well, so it doesn't matter if it's like K. No, because a midpoint has to be, all of those points have to be on the same cycle. Oh, okay. And J, H, and L are not all in the same cycle. Does that make sense? Good question. Okay, so your homework is out of your book. If you don't have your book, take a picture of somebody else's. You might be able to get it done. Page 33 through 34, with all the severe things like the notes. Can somebody kind of up and give me a couple books? Would you? Thank you. I'm so excited about that. Can you me two, please?